Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody inside and outside the ballpark. My name is Noved Player, and welcome to episode 33 of the Nova Notes podcast, where we talk about many different types of creators and many awesome people inside of the platform. I'm your host, and with me today, as you can kind of see already here, uh, I actually do have uh, the creator of one of the horror worlds known as Slashco VR, uh, Manta Bro. Manta, welcome to the podcast. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, of course. Lovely to have you. So, you know, for the general listening audience at home, um, what who exactly is Manta Bro and what do you exactly do inside of VR chat? Well, who exactly is Manta Bro? I don't know. I don't know the guy, but I can speculate, right? So, let's see. Uh, up until very recently, uh. Well, I'm a world world creator since recently. Uh, I released uh, Slash Co VR uh, a couple months ago, and uh, now I'm I'm just updating it every once in a while, every couple of days. I gotcha. Well, I guess you know first and foremost, you know. So with, let's talk a little bit about Slash Co. So what what got you into you know the whole horror type, you know worlds per se like what made you want to make slash co vr uh, this is not exactly about horror worlds per se i'm not really too too much into horror it's, it's more it's more deeper into how i operate as a uh, creative individual let's say that because how how i work is that every once in a while i will get this very ridiculous idea for something that should be stupid and then I just get extremely ambitious about it and go way too deep into it. And it's something that most other people will just have a laugh at for like five minutes and then forget about. But me? No, no, no. I, I take that to the next level. And that's how you got Slashco originally for Gary's mod. And then I remade it for VRChat as Slashco VR. That's awesome. So... You know, it, it's kind of cool to say the least that, you know, that's kind of the buildup. So, you know, what was there a particular reason why you wanted to bring it into VR chat in particular? Well, actually, yes, there is a uh, there is a very specific reason. It was because of my friend Beyond, Hi Beyond, who made the, the another, another game, Terrors of Nowhere. I actually met Beyond like a couple of years back on Gary's mod. And when he moved on to VR chat, and made his own world. Well, his first world that he made is Bust to Nowhere. And then eventually, uh, a couple of worlds later, he released Terrors of Nowhere, which that is a very successful world on its own. That kind of gave me the drive to put my idea into VR chat. No, absolutely. I would say, yeah, Beyond's worlds are absolutely stunning, you know, whether it be the game worlds like Bust of Nowhere and Terrors, or even like the, the more like chill worlds that he's done. Um, I would say definitely, definitely some amazing worlds. Hey, Beyond, if you ever listen to this, you know, if you ever want to come on the podcast, I, you know, <laughs> but <laughs> we'll, have you, we'll have a seat right there for you. But but yeah, so, you know, it's it's really cool. So out of curiosity, you know, did you ever think that Slashco VR was going to be like as big as it is on VR chat, you know, compared to like Gary's mod? Uh, well, see, the, the original version on Gary's mod, it wasn't very that, it, it wasn't that big. Well, it got, it got, I'd say, better than average reception from people, but it was mainly, a, it was mainly the Russian player base, which... I couldn't really communicate with too well. But when I brought it over to VR chat, I'd, I'd like to say I was starting fresh, but I really wasn't. I had a lot of friends that helped me uh, advertise it and get it out there. So honestly, it's not the most humble story, but I've had a fair good head start on it. Hmm, I gotcha. So I guess in that case, like, you know, because you said it was more of a like russian like player base um so i guess out of curiosity what what was like some of the struggles kind of like obviously the language barrier uh for sure but was there any like struggles when it came to like getting things done you know because of like different barrier like language barriers and stuff or did you have like a good amount of people that you know were 
English speaking or, you know, stuff like that? Um, no. Uh, there was definitely a couple of people who were English speaking, but uh, that wasn't mainly the problem. It was mainly the, uh, the way it was implemented as a Gary's Mind game mode, I wasn't fully satisfied with. So when I carried it over to VRChat, that allowed me to actually do what I really wanted to do with that concept, which is fully lean into the horror aspect, as opposed to the original in Gary's mod was kind of just a PvP party game thing. Which, I mean, the current people that actively play it now, they like that, and I respect that, but uh, it's just not... I've lost motivation for that kind of... Uh, gameplay i gotcha yeah uh, i'll say when you do something for so long or you just kind of get burnt out um of things that's totally it's totally understandable there's a not gonna name specific ones there's some certain vr chat at least in my opinion i've played them so much there's certain vr chat games i just i won't touch for at least a month because i i play it too much you know because that's those are you know the popular games right like everybody wants to play them you know and that's great you know kudos to them to you know playing the same game over and over again it's no different than like you know dark souls or any souls type game you know playing new game plus and new game whatever num excuse me whatever number um but yeah i get that i get the i get that burnout when it comes to like gameplay and you know well actually on that i have i have a i have had a couple of people come up to me saying like oh my god i'm so obsessed with slash go i love your game so much and first thing i want to tell them is please don't play it that much you're gonna get bored quickly please i want <laughs> this to last i beg you yeah i was gonna say you know because um it, doing and that's why it's like it's a weird thing, right? Because as, as a creator, right, you want the the players to keep being entertained, so you don't want them to burn themselves out. But at the same time, it's a lot of work, <laughs> as you know. It's a lot of work oh, to yeah. you know keep keep the people oh, yeah. entertained. Um, you know, so I guess I guess one of the questions, you know, kind of go into the game specifically. So, what made you choose the specific monsters that you did? Was there like a was there like a template for it? Like you were like, oh, it's got to be these types of characters or was it completely random? Uh, so you, it goes back to what I said a little earlier where I have a stupid idea and then I elaborate on it a little too much and get ambitious about it. It's, I, I see a, I see a formula, uh, kind of formula for uh, slash go killers that I put in the game. It has to be, they have to be, they have to be humorous in some way, at least for the most part. Some of them, some of them are just kind of basic OCs, but uh, no, the idea is right now, right now I'm lining up a lot of ideas of uh, Sesame Street characters with guns who are drug addicts. And that is, I'm sorry to say, but that is extremely funny to me, and I really want that to be <laughs> in my game, and I really want that, I really want to I make them funny to me and then terrifying to other people. It's all because it's working. <laughs> no, I get that. I was like, yeah, because that's first of all, that's a very interesting concept in that regard. Um, God, I don't remember. There was back in back in the day. Um, once again, on this podcast, I always show my age, but I remember back in the day there was an old, like I don't know if it was a T-shirt company or if it was just a brand company, but they would take like Sesame Street characters and turn them into gangs like street gangs, like 90 style street gangs. And like that, that was the immediate mind process that when you said that, I was like, where immediately where my mind went. Um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, the, I mean, that's kind, kind of, kind of. It's because I, I want to, I want it to be a very horror focused experience, but I also want it to have a sense of humor that's kind of the most important part i want it to be terrifying but i want it to have its own identity and sense of humor mm, i gotcha so i guess you know that's that's funny because now, now i'm just imagining because me and me and my couple of my friends we were playing it uh you know like a, about a week ago and we, we it was some two two of the people that we had with us never played it before um and it was their first time playing it and it, it was absolutely 
hilarious in that regard because they've never played it. They don't know how to play. They're just thrown into the wolves and hope for the best. Like we had them read the, all the, you know, all the stuff, of course, but when you first play a game, you're just crawling, you know, you're, you're hoping for the best until you basic you know, understand the basics and whatnot. But it, it was funny because um, one of the, one of the things that I remember um, I believe it was the, uh, the farmland level. Um, and we were struggling to find, I think it was like one last gas canister and it was just, it, we looked everywhere and we, we, we like spread out, we went together and nobody could find it. I think it was, um, oh gosh, who was it? It was, um, trying to remember the monster off the top of my head. Oh shoot! What did you look like? That's what I'm, I was. I was say there was so many that we did. Uh, it was. Uh, he was a very slow one, from what I remember. Um. Ah, uh, trollage probably. Uh, no, it wasn't troll. I I remember trollage because that's the you know troll face. I remember that one. It was a. It was another one that was like particularly slow. I hope. It'll probably be up on the screen. You describe those sounds. <laughs> to be honest, so much has happened within the past week. Probably couldn't. <laughs> but anyways, um, you know, it's definitely definitely some good quality moments uh, when it comes to playing the game. Um, you can definitely, if you get a bunch of friends, it's definitely a fun game to uh, terrorize each other. Especially when like you sick the mon- like the the creature upon somebody else because you're like, oh look, a fr- group of friends, and you know. Oh, it's chasing me. All right, bet. I'm just going to go dogpile the, that group of people. And it, it, it turns into a screaming match of like, why would you do that? And I'm like, it's funny. It's content. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I was going to say. Uh, well, see, yeah, you can absolutely do that. Plus, it's encouraged. In fact, there are some items in the game which kind of encourage you to not be the nicest to your friends. And I'm all for that. <laughs> we, we do love a little bit of chaos. Um so I guess kind of to go into the the items a little bit. Um, so why milk? <laughs> why milk? <laughs> well, really, it's because of the uh, it's because of one of the killers, right? Thirsty. Right. Uh, thirsty. Drink. He, dr- he drinks cartons of milk, and uh, the well, it was from the very very original concept of uh, the game. Where it was fir- first, it was just the killers. It wasn't the there weren't any items you could choose from. So when we did add the items, uh, milk was added as first and foremost a way to uh, pacify thirsty. You know, you can give him the milk, let him drink it for a bit, and then I decided that hey, you know what, I could give it another function. Let's make it speed you up. Same goes for the cookie. Same idea, cause cookie monster. Uh. I mean, here, as a, as a, I guess as a little teaser for the future, uh, there's also another item that spawns uh, on the maps called the Royal Burger that heals you, that heals you a little bit. That'll also be a, that'll also be a uh, killer-related item. So. Oh. Some good old, good old <laughs> sneak peeks. We love those. Um, Ooh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so I guess, you know, kind of the rain it back a little bit so i guess first one of the one of the things i wanted to ask so what got you into vr chat in the first place well let's see so i joined all the way back in uh it was very late december of 2017 like pretty much right after christmas that was right before the uh the the knuckles thing took over actually i remember when that happened (laughs) Uh, i joined like two days before that became a thing and uh I honestly can't remember what got what really uh, got me into VR chat. It was, you know, it was just a couple of years, but I think I I, I like it here. Even I don't remember why I'm here. I don't know. I don't know how I got here. <laughs> but I like it here. So I'm not complaining. Fair. Well, I guess you know, as somebody who's been around, you know, like before the Knuckles craze was huge, you know, what's something you know from back in that era when you first had joined that. Like m- not many modern people know about. I'll say mo- I'll say modern yeah, like the people. The I'll say modern like you know people that have joined within the last like year or two years. Uh, that's that's a good question. That's a that's a good question. Well, first of all, it's probably the uh, 
I mean, the most eye-catching thing is just the, the big green name tags that people used to have with just a little friend icon. <laughs> a little white friend icon that uh, used to show up if you had the person friended. The, ver the very iconic font they had, too. It was, it was very noticeable. The name tags now are kind of more simplistic looking, I guess. I mean, no. The name tags back then were definitely more simplistic, but they had kind of a character to them. That they were very memorable. Also, oh, the joys of loading up VRChat and spawning in a public hub world. That was... I don't know if you can get that these days. Especially with the, with the, the old hub. When there was no home world. And it was just a different time. Definitely a different time, to say the least. Um, I'll, say, I'll say you probably were around then. Um, I don't know if they changed it just yet. But the, I'm assuming you remember the old, and I'm talking like the old, old VRC like loading music. Were you were you there during that, or was that like after? Oh, the piano one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, I remember at the time. I think uh, the internet connection I had at the time was so bad that I would spend a lot of times on the loading screen, so I get to hear the whole thing and have it loop. So <laughs> I really get to appreciate it. It, it is. It is. They should bring it back. They gotta bring that back. <laughs> Yeah, I was I was gonna say, um, you know, because they did when when the whole VR Chat ten year anniversary, they made the home world um, with the little side path that you could go sit in that tunnel and relive that moment, and it had a little VR. I don't know if you had saw it, but it was a whole like thank you for ten years. Oh. And uh, I don't know if that world is still up, but if it is, like, go check that out. Like it, it's it's such it's such a nostalgia trip. Um, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. Now I do, it's and like, I've become wiser. Now I know what to do next. <laughs> no, it's it's a it's a it really was one of the base, like most best things that VR Chat's done for like anniversary type things. Um, because a lot of people, uh, myself included, remember that music. Remember that you know that loading animation. It was. A different time you know i i was gonna say because you know, there was there's the worlds were so fewer back then too um you know you had like I mean, yeah yeah you, you, and there was a lot more everything simplistic. was simpler mm -hmm. before you know sdk2 before you know the unity changes it was all sorts of madness but you know it, it's just a it, it, it's a good thing to remember the past but you got to remember, without that past, you know, we wouldn't be where we are today. The amount of optimization Ooh, stuff. I just remembered. Mm -hmm. How about the original presentation room and all the public lobbies of that? Yeah, that, for some reason, the presentation room of all things was like the biggest world for most of, most of that time. Oh, absolutely. I remember hanging out there a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I'll say, and it's funny because it was just a room with a giant, like, it was a giant board and pens. Like, there yeah. was, there was nothing. It was, it was just an empty room with just a little pedestal for people to stand on and, like, a couple of whiteboards all around and a bunch of colorful pens. That's it. And it was, it, it was the most powerful, uh, not powerful, it was the most popular world. Yeah, and it goes to show, like, how worlds back then and worlds now like a lot of the worlds now are so more immersive there's so much going on there's so much udon scripting you know and you know in your face type stuff and you know interactivity that was just a room with some pens and a pedestal like you know well, it, it was a different yeah, but time back then virtual reality as a whole was a lot newer so we didn't need it as much that's true yeah i was gonna say it definitely was definitely was a different time so Interestingly enough, granted, there's been so many different, you know, crazes and stuff when it comes to VR chat. Like you would, you know, said, you know, that you got a Knuckles craze. You know, you have like your rating communities like Hapus, LPD, like all of these different communities. And then it just grew and grew. And now, you know, the creators got better. The worlds became, you know, more um, expansive, immersive, and it required a lot more technical skill to create. So kind of to go into that a little bit, what's what was one of the struggles, if there was any, when it came to like creating like slash co VR, uh, like in like Unity or Blender, whatever it may be, 
Like, what was like some of the struggles that you went through, like going through it, if at all any? Well, let's see. Uh, when I first created the project, I knew pretty much nothing about how to actually uh, make an udon scripted world. But I'm a I'm a I'm a very fast learner, so I can I can pick anything up, and then kind of go along with it very easily. I'm I'm lucky to be this way. So within like a month or two, I I was starting to get a hang of it, and then after uh, and after that, then it was just kind of smooth sailing. But it was it was it was not the smoothest in the beginning because I had to figure a lot of stuff out myself. But with a little bit of help and some digging through the wikis, uh, I I did I I did it. If I could do it, I I think anyone can. <laughs> Yeah, definitely, definitely, t to say the least, definitely take some time, um, which funny enough, I'm, I'm actually kind of curious, like, you know, because you said you took it from Gary's mind, put it into VR. So how long did it take you to get Slash Co to its release date? Uh, to its release date? Well, I created the project uh, almost exactly a year ago, actually, I believe it was October or November last year. And then pretty much spent half, over half a year of, well, it wasn't exactly constant work, but it was a lot of work. I did take a break every once, uh, every now and then, but it was a lot of work. But eventually, July 29th, 2024, managed to release it, and it was a hit, so I'd say, I'd say all that time was worth it. No, absolutely. I mean, it's there's not a single place like when horror related like worlds are talked about that slash code is not being brought up anymore, at least from what I've seen. Um, <laughs> but, you know, and it, it's funny because like you can make any type of game when it comes to VR and it may do really good. It may not do so good. But the thing is, is with VR chat and how the platform works, these games are always found and they're shared between friends and then those friends share to other friends. So eventually down the line, if there's a game that, you know, has obviously put in the good work and, you know, it's quality gameplay to some avail, it, it gets out there. Um, I mean, there's also a lot of game worlds out that there. That was my, Go ahead. that was my main, uh, main kind of drive to stick with vr chat because uh udon scripting maybe it is pretty limited the way what it allows you to do and since i don't i don't use the graph system i use uh, i use udon sharp it, it is still quite limited but i i work around that and i know that it's worth it to work around because vr chat is a whole platform where i can actually where i can easily get my game out there without having to worry about having to advertise it get it out there myself. I can just upload it as a world and then I can just show it to people very easily and then it's going to spread. And so it did. I, I was going to say, you know, because you said, you said it was about a year ago, um, give or take. So I guess one of the questions in that regard, right? So did you ever think like when creating this project that it was going to go as well as it did today? Well, I was kind of confident, actually. I was, not going to lie. <laughs> because I knew I was going to put a lot of effort into it, because I already have a good base going on, and I was confident that it was, it was at least not going to be forgotten. It was at least going to be, you know, at least there's going to be a couple people playing it. Mm -hmm. Because it, it took, I, I spent a lot of effort on it. I, I wanted it to be as good as I could possibly get it. Because what I've noticed with, uh, I would say a lot of uh, VR chat worlds, maybe some horror worlds, uh, sound design. The sound design seems to be very lacking there. Kind of more of a kind of an. Uh, it just seems to be decoration, if anything. It was just kind of it was kind of what I thought. But. So when I uh, when I was going around the sound design for Slash Go VR, I wanted that to be, I wanted that to be spot on. I was very careful to make sure the sound design was pretty much something else there. Like the gunshots, like I know a lot of worlds that have some kind of you know weaponry. Gunshots are kind of 
lacking. No, in Slashco, I wanted to make sure that as soon as a gun goes off, like 10 feet away from you, you are deaf. <laughs> I, 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 wanted, I really wanted that to be the case. So you can hear the gunshot from far away as like a little pop. But if you get up close, you are just deaf. In fact, I believe, uh, <laughs> I believe I've made some gunshots so loud they momentarily break audio directionality and spatialization for a couple seconds, which... I mean, it's not ideal, but it's kind of humorous to me. Fair. I, I was going to say, that it's definitely, uh, definitely an interesting, uh, we'll call it a feature. But, you know. <laughs> it's a feature. It's a feature. Yeah, I was say, is it really a bug when it's funnier if it's a feature? Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I was going to say, because there's definitely a lot of cool little tidbits when it comes to the sound design at least what i've noticed uh with slashco like uh specifically like the gas pouring and like you know the battery getting the battery you know clamps and all that so it's just it's little things right you know i i, I definitely can understand that mentality of like okay but how can i improve just a small little thing i get that it's it's definitely a definitely a relatable uh mindset <laughs> trust but yeah so i guess you know one of, one of the things that I've heard a lot about when it comes to um, Slashco. So what, because I know like you were saying how like most of the monster choices um, was just, here's an idea. Let's throw it in and see what, you know, go for it. Whatever stupid idea comes to mind, let's go for it. But, you know, because you, you had already kind of mentioned one. Um, so one of the questions I wanted to ask you know, how often do you plan on, you know, throwing out updates, like, when it comes to the game itself? Mm, well, as of now, we do have a rough roadmap of what we want. Originally, the plan was that I could get one killer out per month, and then every once in a while, we could add a new map. But it turns out I can just work a lot quicker than that. But I don't, I don't know if I should. Maybe I should slow down the content updates a little uh a little so i don't release everything at once and then i just i just feel like drip feeding the content would be a little better than releasing everything at once or as quickly as possible but we do have a lot of plans for what we want to add and i don't want i don't want uh i don't want slash code to just kind of be one big content drop and then i just leave it alone i want to i want to keep it going for a little bit Keep people engaged. No, that's fair. I'll say it definitely keeps the it definitely keeps the retention high in that regard because that just means people will want to come back, you know, and you know, because there's always gonna be something new within said time frame. Yeah, to see what's new. Yeah. They can come in every few weeks and see have they added anything new. And most for slash go, most likely, yeah. There's gonna be something new. At least an item. Even something small. There's gonna be something new. Hey, we all I think I speak with for the whole VR check community. We love new things. Doesn't matter how big or small, we love new stuff. Um I would say it funny funny that we're talking about like new things cuz I know they just recently um put out another patch for VR. Um definitely an interesting one. Um it, it was like offline invites. There's going to be new like features with VRC plus, like there all sorts of interesting things to say the least i know there's probably some mixed opinions i i know there's probably some mixed opinions out there but at least it's new right like some of the stuff some of the stuff is viable some more than others um like i know now you can like go through your vrc friends list and you can actually see like who's on vr chat and then who's on the website so that way you're not inviting people that are on the website um which is cool i don't know it's like small things are positive some may not be as well received uh, but well no one thing that is very annoying actually on the website i have a big complaint over is uh you have the three tabs for the people in game the people on the website and the people that are offline and the website won't let you see everyone that is in game unless you close the two other tabs it'll only show like <laughs> 10 people at most and why would they do that why would they do that <laughs> yeah it happy happy little steps <laughs> you just kind of gotta things will get fixed with time it, you know as, it as, we, as we say it's 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 two steps forward one step backward but you know it's, it's slowly inching forward exactly exactly 
but yeah, man, I would say it's it's definitely an interesting thing when it comes to like how people reciprocate like new things, whether how big or how small it is. Um, you know, for like research purposes, right? It's it's definitely helpful for the creator to kind of know, okay. Well, now they're expecting another big update or, you know, okay, they're okay with, you know, small little ads here and there, maybe some optimization stuff, maybe, you know, A, B, C, D, you know, it's definitely, definitely a good thing to say the least. Um, so I, I guess kind of to, you know, go a little bit more into slash go again. Uh, so with that, you know, you have the main lobby area um with you know kind of the double story type uh you know you have all the information up top you also have like all the rules and stuff and how to play on the bottom so i guess like one of my questions is is uh what what kind of what inspired that design specifically because you know you could have went like with one layout but like what what inspired you to do like the layout of the spawn area hmm that is actually not a question for me, but my for my wonderful co-developer, Konkin, a.k.a. Zeta. She is the one that uh, designed the lobby area. So I can't really speak for her on this, but... I mean, I, I hope it's not too confusing for people. <laughs> Fair. Well, I mean, worst comes to worst. Uh, if you want to ask... If you want to ask them, I'll put a little like text box down here and be like, "Oh, they said this." <laughs> um, sure, sure, I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> yeah, um, we'll, we'll have a little text box like down here or something. But <laughs> look, it's right there. That's what they said. <laughs> um, whoa! What are you doing here? This is wild. <laughs> what are you doing here? I was here to remind these guys of something. What are you doing? Yeah, what are you going to remind them about, Lion? I wanted to remind them about something, too. <laughs> By the way, if you did you have fun at PJKT or VCAT this year? Is there another convention that you're looking for, but it's kind of not the season? Well, there's one co coming up for Halloween that would be definitely down your alley if you're in your spooky, scary stuff as well, which is HorrorCon, which is October 26th and 27th this year. So you should definitely go. You see booze, people make stuff here in VR. Lots of crazy stuff for you to go check out. There's also going to be DJs as well as many different worlds and events from panels to amazing things along the way. You'll have to check it out. It is a two-day event, like Lion said, October 26th and 27th. Make sure to be there. Go down in the description, discord.gg slash pjkt, and also HorrorCon's Discord will also be down there as well. Go check it out. It'll be an amazing time. You'll probably see us there. There's a lot of amazing people from horror creators to world creators of the horror genre, all sorts of stuff. You don't want to miss it. Not at all. Go down the description. Everything you need to know to find out where to go to attend is right down below in the hoobly what's the thingy down there. So sorry to interrupt your current viewing pleasure. Hopefully you enjoy the rest of whoever the guest is at this moment. I don't know who it is. There's a lot. There's going to be a lot. <laughs> we'll see you at HorrorCon. Woo! See you at HorrorCon. But yeah, I guess uh, kind of to go into that a little bit, um, you know, so you did have like a little bit of help from other people. Um, so what exactly, you know, granted, you know, there's credits in the world, but I want to be more specific than that because, you know, why not? So what exactly did like certain people do in like, who who helped you make this amazingness that is slash go VR? Let's see. Uh, me, I'm I'm just mostly the project lead. I have the, I have the Unity project. I make a lot of the killers. I set up the animations. I mocap the animations with my uh, full body setup right here, and then clean them up in Blender, and then that's how they end up in game. Then we have Konkin, aka Zeta. My wonderful co-developer who fix who mm, makes some of the maps for me, fixes them up, does some 3D modeling, retexture work. I mean, and also uh, handles a lot of the uh, stuff in the Discord server, community-wise. You know, like banning cheaters, stuff like that. I would not be able to do that myself. So I'm like, it, it's a thankless job, but I still thank her for it because. Oh my god. It, you know, we also have Cena. Cena 
does uh, a lot of the 3D modeling and texture work for a lot, pretty much all of the killers now. All of them, they had original models from Gary's Mod, but he graciously remade them and made them look extremely good. Like, I'd say triple A quality, honestly. Uh, and does a lot of other texture work, re remakes other models, not just the killers, not just items, maybe some props. Like, honestly, without him, the game wouldn't look as good. So, I thank him for that. Fair. I, I would say it's definitely cool that you got like kind of a small team to, you know, help you produce, you know, such an such an immersive map, you know, like Slash Go. Um, it's it's definitely definitely cool to say the least that you know it's. Uh, granted, so, solo world creators are amazing. Don't get me wrong. Solo world creators are absolutely phenomenal in what they do. But when it comes to indie developers and indie studios, you know, kind of to see a group of people come together to make something awesome, you know, it, it's it's cool to say the least, you know, um, because that that's how a lot of VR chat as well as like indie studios, that's how they work. You know, it's a small team of, you know, maybe three five seven twelve maybe people you know and then you know they grow and grow and you know they put out more stuff and it becomes bigger than you know anything ever intended look at among us look at among us for example it's a group effort yeah i said look at like among us and inner Sloth studios it's it's definitely like they were not expecting to get that big and then the you know it just grew and grew you know it's Stuff like that. It, it it starts from small beginnings and grows into big, amazing things. Um, which is definitely... It, it's definitely a wholesome story, to say the least. Um, you know, so I guess kind of, you know... Kind of to go a little bit into that a little bit. Um, so, because you said you started the Unity Project about a year ago. Um, so, I guess one of the questions I wanted to ask in that regard, did you originally start this as a solo project and then have them join in? Or did you all kind of start on it at the same time when it came to, like, your, your team? Oh, yeah. Originally, it was a solo project. It was just me trying to carry over my old project in, as something new, something much better, something that I actually care about this time. And uh, eventually... Kind of, kind of, very smoothly and naturally, the two kind of just join in. I, I can't. I honestly can't really recall the history of like the moment, the moment they joined the team because it was so seamless. It's just they were, they were not there, they and just, now they're here. <laughs> yeah, so they. I mean, it wasn't was not suddenly. They just they they were they've offered to help with you know some models stuff like that. Then offered to help again. You know, eventually they just. They're part of a team now. I gotcha. Um, well, that's really cool, man. I, that's that's really cool that you know you got, you know, your small team getting together and making this amazing collaborative effort to make Slashco. Um, so kind of to you know, let's go into the world specifically a little bit from the community standpoint. Um, you know, because I, I guarantee you've heard a lot of positivity. Um. Was there ever any specific, um, like comments from the community that made you kind of want to change certain aspects of the game, um, for VR specifically, let's say, like whether it's certain visual things or, or anything like that? Uh, well, I mean, there, of course, there has been comments and suggestions that people have given me. And if it's if it's a if it's a very small thing that doesn't really affect it, then I kind of just do it without thinking. I don't even mention it. I push the update, and it's there until they suddenly realize it. But if it's some if it's a, if it is a major like gameplay change, then I'm a lot more hesitant at that. I wouldn't say I'm not I'm not open to suggestions, but I'm just I'm very hesitant on like very major suggestions because I, I have a vision for it and i kind of want to head towards that vision and i also don't want to be too mean to people because i know that they do want to they do want the game to be as enjoyable as possible and i should absolutely consider their suggestion but so i like suggestion i'm just hesitant <laughs> 
no that that's valid no that's valid um i, I was gonna say um because it, it's definitely it's good to take feedback from the community and it's definitely good that you know you're willing to do so because there's not not no specifics of course but you know there's there's some creators and i'm not talking vr chat in this case i'm talking just in general um that they don't take that you know constructive criticism or feedback and sometimes it shows especially if it's a large you know community or whatever and you know they're all pushing for this one change um well you know funny enough let's take um i guess what is it paramount or univert you know paramount you know, with the whole Sonic movie. You know how many complaints there were about the Sonic, you know, original model for the original Sonic movie? Like, it made them change the entire movie. And it delayed the movie, yeah, sure. But, you know, it's so much better now. You know, granted, it doesn't always have to be that big of a change. You know what I mean? But, um, you know, even even the small things, you know, it, it's nice. that it, it's, it's cool to hear that you take, you know, feedback and stuff. Um, it's really cool. I was gonna say, so oh, yeah. I guess one See, I'm I'm one of those creators that doesn't really interact that much. I I do look at suggestions. I read everything, if well, most if not everything. But then I just I just kind of uh, I hold on to it. I know I don't ever really like tell people like, oh, this is a very interesting suggestion. I might consider it. I just read it, and then all of a sudden you might just see it added in game. You never know. Fair. So, in other words, what I'm hearing is, is uh, hey, if you play Slashco, you'll leave some feedback. Because it might be added in. Might. It will be red. Yes. That's about, that's about the only thing that can be guaranteed. It, like, might, it might be red. Even if, you, even if you don't, even if you, we don't get back to you, it will be red. That's for sure. No, fair. I mean, it's good to, it's good to know that you at least read the feedback, to say the least, because... It means you are actively seeing it at, at the very minimum. So out of, out of curiosity, because I know you say, you know, you weren't strictly horror by any means, you know, um, but because I know you actually did, you did make another world um, that maybe some people don't know about, but you actually did make, um, the name is failing me at the current moment, but I do know it has planes involved. Um, I'll say if I remember correctly. Right. Oh, was, the other uh, world they uploaded yeah, the the, uh, the plane Air. simulator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. VR Air flight simulator. VR Air. Yeah. Yeah, I was just saying. Well, that project, I kind of, I kind of left that in the dust for to focus fully on Slashka. What what that was meant to be is pretty much Microsoft Flight Simulator, just extremely realistic controls for an aircraft. And that was that was the main idea, and. Uh, the, that's always kind of my uh, my process with this. I want to go above and beyond with these things. I want to make this this slash go horror game, and I want to really push into the sound design and kill as make it as scary as possible. And I want to make this a flight simulator world where every single switch you have to manually click, and you know all the controls are there. Just so, in other words, about ninety percent of the people that play it just immediately crash. Got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say so. Yeah. Um, well, that's cool. I was, I was gonna say so. Um, now I don't. I don't know the timeline. So was Slash Co VR first in that case, or was it the the flight simulator first and then oh, Slash? Well, the flight the flight simulator I made as just kind of a first world to upload to make sure I knew what I was doing. Uh, so yeah, that came first. I worked for maybe a month or two on that, and then I moved on pretty much fully to Slashco VR. Well, because I felt the passion. I felt that passion, so I, I had to make use of it. Yeah, of course. So I guess one of the questions I want to ask you in that case, you know, because now you have two worlds under your belt, um, you know, do you think there's going to be more worlds in the future, or, you know, do you think... You're just going to keep Slash Co. be the main one for a while? Or do you think there's going to be any other, you know, completely different worlds in that aspect? Uh, as of now, I'm, for the at least near future, I'm only seeing Slash Co. as my main project that I really want to focus on and make into something that 
I think I'm really, really proud of. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm already proud of it, but I know what it can be. I can already see what it um, can and hopefully will be. And if that cools off, then I can move on to making more worlds because I'm, I'm never out of ideas. No, I mean, no, the, first of all, that's great to hear that you're never out of ideas. Um, you know, and that's, like I said, you know, with how much there could be added to Slash Co, you know, you definitely, you got the time, you know, <laughs> there's a, there's a lot of cool things and I'm, I'm very excited. I know as probably many people listening or watching, depending on the platform, um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of excitement when it comes to Slash Co VR. So you, you got an amazing thing going. Definitely. I think I speak for anybody listening or watching, like, please keep up the good work. You know, because <laughs> um, we're we're very excited to see more world creators. You know, do amazing stuff. <laughs> the Manta Bro Fortnite emote, got it. Um, but anyway, it's gonna be funny to not hear they're not gonna you, i don't know if it's your mic but you, nobody heard you laugh except for the yo that's all they heard <laughs> <laughs> oh man but but uh but yeah man no i i was gonna say um so i guess one of the questions i wanted to ask um kind of to you know talk about the community side um have there ever been any um thoughts into like you know, maybe collaborations of any type of stature, or do you think it's just going to be slash co VR stay slash co VR? Uh, like any, when it comes to like maybe like communities or, you know, maybe events uh, or stuff like that. Well, mm, I, I can, hey, let's just say I can get people excited here and say there is an ongoing collaboration with Terrors of Nowhere, High Beyond. So, of course, there's collaborations. Well, good, good. I, I was gonna say, um, well, that's cool. Like, I make sure to stay excited. Um, you know, for those listening and watching. Um, so I guess you know, because you you said you met Beyond uh, a few years back. Just out of curiosity, what what was what's kind of the story? You know, how how did you meet Beyond? Uh, well, we met each other on a Gary's Mod server. So you do, <laughs> and then. You know, we became friends, then we both move on to VR chat, and I kind of follow him. You know, he, like, Beyond is the one that got me into world making, so, you know, that's my origin story. Fair. So I guess, you know, since you were big into Gary's mod, just kind of a goofy question, but a fun question to say the least. So what, what was your favorite thing about, like, Gary's mod in general? Oh, uh, let's see. Well... <laughs> the community was pretty good. Like, I made a lot of good friends there that I still talk to to this day. And it was... Mm, if you go to the right places, it is a very good creative outlet, actually. Which is, I think, where both me and Beyond got kind of our knack for, uh, you know, mm, the creativity we put into our worlds. Like, it's. I think it's, it sounds like a silly thing to say, but yeah, I think... Our creative origins is Gary's mind. Fair. I would say, because there's, like you said, like, there's a lot of things for, you know, community and, like, you know, content and stuff. Um, so uh, you, you've probably played a lot of different types of, you know, maps and, you know, done different types of things when it comes to Gary's mod. Um, so I guess like out of all the things that you've done, is there like a personal favorite when it comes to like playing Gary's mod? Like, you know, any specific games or, you know, stuff like that. Well, see, that's the thing. What me and Beyond did was pretty much only one thing. It is, a uh, this is the sandbox game mode on one, maybe two specific servers. Uh, it wasn't, it was, so it wasn't exactly varied gameplay, but it would be a long story to explain, but it just, it just allowed us to be very creative and very free with the uh, source engine tools we were given. Hmm, I gotcha. Um, well, I was going to say, you know, um, cause we are running a little bit out of time, but I do want to ask, um, first of all, this did not feel like close to an hour. <laughs> so 
was, it was oh, very, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was, it was very fun to, you know, get to know you more. Um, but before we get into the outro stuff, you know, one question I did want to ask, um, you know, because as a now world creator um, in VR, um, is there any type of advice you can give um, to anybody listening or watching that may may want to do, you know, these immersive maps? Um, not saying like, you know, stuff that you've done, like do similar stuff, but like just in general, like when it comes to making a game world or, you know, worlds that you have to, you know, actively do thing. It's not just a chill world that you just sit around a mirror. You get my point. But is there any type of advice like you can give for maybe for those that may want to go that route when it comes to VR chat creations? Well, let's see. At least just from personal experience, when you think up of a lot of the uh, the technical side of things, like how you how are you gonna have to do this, how are you gonna have to do that, in your head it's gonna it's gonna sound and look very complicated, and you sh it, it's gonna seem like you're gonna spend trying days, weeks trying to figure stuff out. But when you go to actually do it, it is a lot easier than it sounds or than it would seem. So you can stay hopeful for that. It is easier than your mind would trick you to believe. No, absolutely. 1000% amazing advice in that regard. Um, as somebody who doesn't mess with unity myself, it, it is easier than it looks. It looks very complicated. Um, I can't speak yeah, on like with the, with the UI and things, it, it looks very complicated, but I mean, it's probably for different people. It'll take different amounts of time to get, uh, very familiar with it then but no matter how long it how long of a time it's going to take it's not impossible it is it it is not possible to get a hold of it no abs absolutely i mean plus there's like thousands upon thousands of youtube tutorials like most things that when it comes to unity you can look up um especially when it yeah, comes you to you are VR not chat. alone on this that too you are you are not alone in things you can ask people for help and they and they just will help you i speak from personal experience yeah. <laughs> thank, yeah. thank you con ken and cena and thank you beyond <laughs> um as of course um i would say funny funny enough um small little tangent before you ended off because um i actually as of today as this episode is being recorded um i just released a 2.0 edition of my community's hangout world um and it was actually because um of a few world creators um like show pow uh blaze creek and uh, uh emil um all three of them and i were in a vc you know just hanging out doing you know doing random stuff on vr you know, not vr but you know just doing random stuff in unity some of us were in vr and we were just hanging out talking and um i was like man i just i just don't understand this little thing and all three of them perked up i was like oh you just got to do this 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 i'm like oh well that was easy <laughs> like it, unity is a very tough thing um which funny enough um, I don't know if you had heard this last tangent and then we'll end it out, but unity actually did drop their, uh, I think it's what, I think it's what's called the runtime fee. I think it just got announced. It's all over social media. Um, which it's crazy to say the least. Um, and I'll throw, I'll throw a little, I'll throw a little thing on the screen, but for, like from the article, um, which is huge for, you know, smaller creators that, you know, want to make game dev stuff and whatnot. Um, small little fun fact for those, for those that yeah. love one, Unity. One, one thing that I, I also, uh, I also thought of is that since Unity was originally designed as a software for game developers and VR chat basically exposed Unity to a lot of people that would, would never be game developers, like avatar creators. So, and to them, it's going to look a lot more intimidating just without mm, the previous kind of a uh, perspective of being a game developer. Oh, yeah. Avatars, worlds, assets. Um, like, yeah, Unity is literally what makes this world and this game and this podcast and Slash Co. and literally everything else on the VRChat platform go round. 
you know, everything uses Unity to some avail. Um, you know, I mean, it's a good thing that Unity, you know, Unity is a is a good tool when it, you know, doesn't want to do goofy things. When it, yeah, when it works. When it works. And when it works, yeah, true. And it doesn't just crash out of nowhere. But just like any game engine, it happens. Um, some more than others. But, um, bro, Manti, Manti, bro, that was really stupid. I'm sorry. <laughs> I do want to thank you. Uh, I do want to thank you so much uh, for coming on. This is an absolute blast. Uh, getting to know you a little bit more and, um, you know, getting to know more about Slashco and, you know, your origins of VR and stuff. Um, but, yeah, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Oh, thank you for having me. <laughs> no, it was a blast. Um, but before we go, um, I do want to give you the proper chance. Um, let the people know where they can find you, any links you want on the screen in the description. Um, but, yeah, the floor is yours. Take it away. Well, let's see. I really, uh, I would really appreciate it if you just visited Slashco VR on VR Chat. You know, maybe played a couple of rounds, see if you like it or not. It's, I, I, I mean, it's probably not everyone's cup of tea, but maybe you'll like it. You, you never know. If you want to find me, then uh, I don't really use a lot of social media, but I guess the place to go would be my Patreon. If you ever want to support me, I mean, that would that would be nice. <laughs> You can also join the Slashco VR Discord. It's just discord.gg slash Slashco VR. There, that's where I'm pretty much the most active with game updates. Stuff like that. Huh. There you go. Awesome. Well, I will say, uh, I know you are representing it. Um, unless if that's a completely different group. Um, I will say, do you have a VR chat group for Slashco VR? Or is it just kind of just random communities? We do. We do. We do, actually. We do. There is the Slashco uh, VR check group here. I can pull out the code for that in a second. Uh, if you would like to join the group, it is uh, in all caps slash period 3139. Awesome. Well, dude, Manti, it was so lovely to have you on. This is, like I said, it definitely, it definitely did not feel did not feel like an hour to say the least i looked up and i saw it was already 40 no. minutes in and i was like oh wow that was quick um <laughs> so but no it was it was a blast i would say it was definitely nice to know you uh get to know you more and you know get to learn kind of how slash co went in and how it was you know how it got to where it is today um but yeah well ladies gentlemen everybody inside and outside the ballpark that is it for episode 33 of the Nova Notes podcast. I want to thank you <laughs> so much for watching. If you did enjoy uh, what we talked about um, regarding, you know, Manti and uh, Slash Co VR, you know, feel free to, you know, smack that like button, leave a comment down below. You know, who's your favorite, you know, who's your favorite slasher in Slash Co VR? Leave it down in the comment section down below. You know, hell, Manti might even, you know, check it out and keep an eye on it just to see, you know, which one's the crowd favorite. Um, but with that, I want to thank you all so much for watching. And of course, if you, you know, are watching some of the other episodes and are coming back, why not hit that subscribe button? You're already coming back anyway. And with that, I want to thank you so much once again for watching and I will see you in the next episode. Take care and peace. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to Novus Club.